Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. Coming up, it's new, it's affordable, and it's 100% American-made. We have the new tactile knife, Chupacabra. It's also very exciting because it uses the Snex Super Lock. Uh, also, Microtech LUDT. I have one of the last Gen 2s that I could find out there. Apparently, there are a couple of more, uh, but I got one of the last ones, and yes... The Nova 2 prototype is here, and I'm very, very excited to show that off tonight. It is beautiful, uh, exceeding expectations. Ground Fog, good to have you here, sir. Uh, Fernando Salome, hello, excuse me, hello, Knife Junkies. Bob, Jim, miss you all. Love to all. Love to you, sir. Patty's nuts. Nice to have you. Good evening, all. Real jazz to see the new Nova 2. I put new in there, but... Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to show it off. It is a thing of beauty. This old sword, good to have you here. Bob's back from break. Yay. He was just sharpening his blades. That's right, sir. I was uh, I was back Ohio way, sharpening my blades. Speaking of which, split and slices. Nice to have you, sir. have you here, sir. Howdy, Bob, Jim, and Junkies. It's Thursday Night Knives. Glad that Swiss Army uh, 2 I sent to Virginia found a loving home and pocket. Well, you'll be seeing that during the pocket check, but here's a spoiler alert. I use that little hawk bill blade for everything, Byron. That has been my go-to knife for the past mm, week. Uh, thank you so much for that, but, but I can't wait to show that off. Craig Vincent, good to have you here, Craig. Even in Bob and Junk Rockers, Craig and I are doing a, a trade. He's sending me a Twist Master, and I'm sending him a Steel Tiger. It's a cold steel trade. I'm really looking forward to checking out that uh, late 90s, early 2000s, I guess, era Cold Steel, uh, super robust version of the Open L with the twist lock. Will B, good to have you here. Hey, Bob, Jim and Junkies, Will B, good to have you. Will is a, uh, a Nova 1 owner, so I'm excited to show him the Nova 2. Loyal Group, good to have you here, Loyal Group. Evening, gents, he says. Evening to you. Uh, Robert Douglas Evening, Bob and all. Well, good to have you. You have Bod here, but I haven't been working out lately, so I think you probably mean Bob. Uh, another cool thing, um, I got pictures of the TKL Knives Agent 001, the one that I designed uh, with Tim. And uh, it's finally, uh, I shouldn't say finally, He's he can move pretty quickly. He's a small, nimble company. Uh, but but uh, the metal prototype or the metal first metal version is in the works and he sent me pictures with a blue handle and it looks gorgeous can't wait will be i carried my nova one today well that's awesome i'm happy to hear that actually i carried uh i did not have my nova one on my person but i always have it close at hand whether it's here on the desk with me or at work in my bag so a uh, nova one always close at hand uh, Blade Ogre. Hello, all. He says, well, Blade Ogre, hello to you, sir. Hope you're doing well. Joseph S., good evening. Joseph S., to you, good evening. Are those throwing knives? Can't tell, Joseph. Uh, but if so, are you a good thrower? Nick EDC or hey, Bob, Jim, and Junkies. Good to have you here, Nick, as always, with your white owl. Stephen Clayton Jr., our TKL Knives resident fan. Good evening, everyone. I'm looking forward to the release of the Agent 001. Well, uh, I am too. Uh, I cannot wait to um, feel this thing in, in its final format, you know, steel and G10, etc. Uh, Loyal Group says, what you drinking there, Bob? I'm five times into a little Jack and Zero. Okay, so I've got oh, five into. Uh, I have water because I'm, I'm trying. I'm a terrible water drinker. It, 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 it runs in my family. Uh, and I have just a little nip of Basil Hayden, a snort, as my father would say. And it's quite good. Uh, Will B says, my Nova one and my TKL Night... Oh, cheers to you, sir. Uh, my Nova one and my TKL Night Stalker CQC swap out for cross draw. Uh, so I always have one of those. You know, uh, the Nova one in cross draw. I I've been doing everything in cross draw, not cross draw, in uh, reverse uh draw whether it's in the waistband or on you know scout on the front and uh, i'm looking forward to uh seeing how this thing works in that front grip uh or front uh, carry method this old sword says i'm seeing that chupacabra coming in at 249 is that right also 
Tactile is saying sold out. Now, I think they went on sale today. Uh, could it be that they sold out today? I thought it was less than 249. I'm pretty sure it was 187. Like, like uh, the Snoop lyric. Um, I'll check it. Uh, I'll check with my people and see what they have to say. I'm pretty sure he told me it was 187, but uh, oh no. MSRP is 249. You're right. You're right. I just checked. For some reason, I thought uh, 187, which I thought, oh, they could still get away with calling that affordable because it's 100. This is under 300. And for a knife made completely in uh, Dallas, it's a. Uh, we'll talk about it. I'll show it off. See what you think. Joseph S. says, uh, it's a Marlin spike. Oh, fixed blade and folder. How cool. I like Marlin spikes. Uh, Northern Knives, good to have you here. What's good, Bob? Jim and Junkies. Well, what's good with you, sir? Good to have you here. Uh, let me show you this just since I have it out here. Uh, Byron says, it's like Loyal Group's beverage check better. <laughs> just saying. Exactly. So this is that uh, really cool Bowie knife my brother got me uh, for either my last birthday or Christmas. I'm not sure, but we caught up and he gave me three knives, uh, this being <laughs> the Mac Daddy of them, the chief of them. He got this at a Civil War show. And I got to say, like, it really does look pretty darn old, uh, like legitimately weathered. The pitting is quite deep on this steel, but it's a it's a nice chunk of steel. Um, it has this really wicked clip. I mean, it's it's almost comical how clipped that blade is. And uh, the only knives I've seen that have been close to this have been on the Confederate side or the Southern side of the Civil War or the earlier part of this country. Also, these Quillians, the one uh, going up and the one down in the S shape, but kind of the, with the lobes, uh, as opposed to just a downturned piece of flat uh, metal, uh, is also something I've seen on uh, Southern Bowie knives, uh, especially like Civil War era. Now, I'm not saying this is a Civil War Confederate Bowie knife, but it could be. It'll do till the real thing gets here, uh, as the Cone brothers would say. But like, I love uh, the shape of this, and it's just a big, heavy knife. I'm going to go over here to the main camera just so you can see what this this is like. Uh, like, look at that. If uh, if someone came out, you know, someone came to pick up my daughter for a date and, and I came out with this, like this would send a message with that with that clip. They'd be like, I think that clip is sharp. I better uh, I better get to I better be behaving. Uh, Robert Douglas. Good to have you here, Robert. Let's hit that like, gentlemen. I usually forget. Uh, I also am, am a forgetful fella. And I, I forget that I also already greeted you. So uh, but hey. We don't lose anything by greeting each other twice. Craig Vincent, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, you know what it reminds me of, actually? Uh, this <clears throat> reminds me a bit of the Cayman. Uh, kind of makes the Cayman's clip look uh, rather tame by comparison, I got to say. But when when I first opened this, oh, by the way, look at this beautiful leather sheath my brother made. Really nice. Um, he could have been a cobbler or a sheath maker, or a bag, or just a leather worker, period, in another life, uh, if if he didn't go on to kick ass in a, a different realm, uh, but he's very good with leather, uh, but check that out, look at that, when when I pulled this out, I was, I thought of this knife, but now that I see this knife, that clip, which I always thought was pretty extreme, is nothing compared to that, look at that, that's like a scimitar, it's like a cartoon scimitar, um, I love it. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's intimidating. I think it's historical. And it's one of those knives, uh, like on this past week's midweek, yesterday's midweek supplemental, uh, that whether, I don't know when it's from, but I know it's seen something. You can just see it written all over it. Split and slices. Togata. You mean to ask the uh, for the double junky old sword discount for the 187. Togata. That was a knife. Uh, for the one, yeah, the double junky old sword discount. I, I wish. Uh, throw split and slices in there. Maybe we can get it down to one eight seven. Togata, Togata. That was um, uh, cones, cones craft designed knife made by Bastac. I'm guessing. I'm thinking. Uh, Craig Vincent says, turns that Cayman into a 
Taman. I like I like that. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, Dion Page says, hello, King Junkies Jim, Junkies Worldwide. Dion, good to have you here, man. Always a pleasure to have Dion Page with us. Dion, we're going to show off the Nova 2 shortly. Can't wait to show that off. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm excited about the uh, Agent 001. I mean, you know, uh, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. I'm really happy to see uh, designs that I've either done completely. Oh, no, actually, neither one of these designs am I responsible for completely. Uh, but uh, I like to see my blades um, and my designs uh, blended with, with that of uh, makers that I love. And then to see it come to fruition is amazing. I got to say, and if I can do it, anyone can. Oh, Eugene, Retirement Forge Book Spot Deposit. Thank you, sir. All right. Oh, well, I was just showing that off, so I won't salute you with that since you've seen it. Here, I'm going to salute you with this since I was just talking to the Station 9. Look at that. To Vol, uh, Vol West of Station 9, one of the two, uh, uh, Tony Lopez and Vol West. Our Station 9, they are very interested in World War I and World War II uh, hand weaponry, especially amongst the covert agencies and resistance organizations and how in World War I, here, here, are, here are two things from their World War I collection. In World War I, simple household items or simple commercial items like a butcher knife uh, were pressed into combat and... Um, that's what this is. This is the partisan. So this is a trench knife, uh, French trench knife, uh, based on a butcher's knife, French style butcher's knife that would have been used or, and, and, or modified say with that swedge for combat in the, in the trenches. Very interesting conversation with Vol West of, uh, station nine. Definitely check that one out. That's coming up this weekend. Uh, but here, uh, I'm going to salute you with this awesome, knife the partisan by the way this is 1095 blade steel with uh burlap micarta handles and these these things uh, i haven't done it myself uh, but that's what i love about people who torture test knives and you can see videos of them doing various things with this knife and bending it and stabbing it through all sorts of things and um it looks like it, it can really go the distance. So I'm happy someone else did it with theirs. Uh, this is to you, Eugene. Thank you so much. One day I will forge you something just like this in the forge I buy with these super chats. My uh, appreciation. And your drive by. Or swim by. There you go. Thank you so much, man. Greatly appreciated. Five Door, good to see you here, Five Door. Greetings, Bob, Jim, and Junkies. Well, greetings to you, Five Door. I'm getting a Nova 2, says Dion. Mm -mm. Wait till you see it. Wait till you see it. It might not be to your liking, uh, but it will be, I'm sure. Thomas Farkas, nice to have you here, Thomas. Hello, Bob and Jim. Hope you're doing well. Well, I'm doing well, and uh, checking in with Jim before. Uh, I think he's doing well. We uh, went out, had our Wendy's yesterday. My God, those hamburgers, ridiculous. Ed, swing them by to drop a like. Ed, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. Let me know before you leave what you're carrying today. Just drop it in the comments. Uh, if you would, Blade Ogre says, I thought I'd do some decent, wait, thought I had some good, decent Bowies until I finally found a Baron Sons freedom fighting Bowie. I like that from Bucky's two weeks ago. To me, that Bowie blows the Undertaker and Wild West out of the water. Interesting, because uh, from pictures, to me, uh, that knife, uh, Jim, can you just go back real quick, because I want to reference the name, that knife, the Freedom Fighting Bowie, I've always admired, but I always thought it was different dimensions. I, th I always thought it was more of like a K-Bar uh, size uh, knife. Uh, rather than something like the Wild West or the uh, Undertaker. So that's cool to know that that fits in that size category because I always thought it was a very good-looking knife. I love that long swedge across the back. And I have no Baron Sons except for one uh, very, very mid um, Bally song. So, uh, But I'm still interested in that Alabama country. So 
or company. So Chris, thank you. Will B says, when's the pre-order for the Nova two? Uh, uh, like a week or two. I got to get my ducks in a row. Uh, um, yeah. I, so just seeing it, I got to make sure that, uh, uh, I like it how it is. Um, I, I love how it is. Perhaps the sheath color changes. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to rush into it. Um, so, but when that pre-order is open, you guys will be the very first to know. Absolutely. And, uh, and we'll leave it open until everyone is satisfied and then we'll close it. That's pretty much how it worked last time. Uh, it'll probably be slightly pricier than last time. Um, but not by too much. It will be, it will be definitely fair for a, an awesome handmade knife. All right. All of that said, let us now do get to a pocket check. Frequent rotation is this Microtech Amphibian. I'm so in love with Microtech these days. And this Amphibian is the dream knife because it's big, recurved. Uh, it's got the amazing uh, ram lock. It's fidgety. It's smooth, but also built like a proverbial tank. This is the G10 version with the fluting. Uh, you can also get it for the exact same price uh, with the aluminum handle with the same fluting. Now I have the aluminum version of the stitch with the ram lock and the fluting and all of that. So I, I got this one first. I decided I'd go aluminum with the other one. I do love the aluminum. It is a bit heavier. I love the sound it makes. It feels very solid. Uh, but this G10, man, won me over. I was a little disappointed when it first showed up because, uh, to be honest, I didn't know which one I ordered. And I was having trouble uh, getting to the bottom of it before it showed up. So when it showed up in G10, I was like, ah, and then immediately was like, oh, uh, I love this knife. I think it's, I think this is a one knife option. I think it's amazing. Uh, big, very useful. And with that, those serrations, you know, it'll, it'll go the distance for sure. Uh, did not use it at all today. To me, this is a tactical uh, self-defense knife. Not that I wouldn't take it out and use it to open up boxes and stuff, but I had this next one on me. And so I didn't got my amphibian today, says this old sword. You got the one with the green handles, right? The green G10. Oh, what a knife. So my slip joint today was in this uh, collector knife slip, which is very nice slip. I, I use it for a lot of different knives, but I had this most special knife in my uh, mostly in my right pocket right next to this. This is the Swiss Army II uh, that Byron this uh, uh, that Byron got me this past mm, week. I opened this up, uh, but he was on a really cool uh, tour in Europe and picked this up for me. And not only picked it up, but really customized it. And um, not only did he have my name inscribed in the blade and the knife junkie on the other side, which is so cool. This is one of those uh, big 93 millimeter um, Swiss Army knives with the big blade, the A-locks. This one is the Swiss Army II, which you cannot find here to save your life. And it's the one that's got the little hawk bill. And I love this knife and I've wanted it for a while. And Byron listens. Byron listens. He's got to be a good husband. I mean, he's a listener for sure because he's heard me i haven't talked too much about how much i wanted this knife uh but i mentioned it a few times when i got the swiss army one and um and he found it over there in europe had it specialized for or uh, customized for me and sent as a thank you gift and man thank you is all to you i really appreciate that such a beautiful gift and man imminently useful i'm i'm you know a victorinox uh sucker these days not these days but all all days but i've been an enthusiast recently and this one just takes the cake here you know what um yeah i'll leave that out because of the inscription all right in my uh left pocket which is a strange place for me to have a fixed blade was my fixed blade today have a knife day says good evening just woke up to watch uh going to the gym more is wearing uh going to the gym more is wearing me out i hear that have a knife day uh good to see you here sir um 
I had this in my left pocket. Uh, this is the Amtac Northman. Uh, I had it uh, in the left pocket because I had this in my right pocket, but I still wanted to carry this. Uh, and the reason for that will be evident next week uh, or on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday next week. Uh, but I, I like this style of knife. I, I've got this knife as a gift from my father who is reading Jack Carr. And uh, man, he got he gets drawn into Jack Carr's description uh, of all the cool gear he uses in in the um, in the uh, James Reese books. And this thing is wicked cool. I love it. This is uh, uh, designed by Bill Rapier, Amtac Blades, and I. Uh, he is a former uh, SEAL, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. But uh, this is a do everything knife. Uh, obviously, you look at it; it's a self defense knife, especially with that uh, nicely drawable um, quillion back here and this hump for grabbing it out, either in reverse grip or forward grip but it's also uh for you know survival it's got a fire starter here it's got this velcro thing under here where you can stash a a handcuff key or a hundred dollar bill or something and then you drop this down in your pocket and it very discreetly rests there the script uh the the script the uh sheath is ambidextrous and but today i carried it just like this, not not to pull out in reverse grip fighty, fighty action, but uh, regular. And uh, I really dug it. I've carried that as my main carry in the right pocket. And um, I, I like it there, too. But I always want a big folder on me, too. So um, dig that knife. All right. Last uh, for emotional support, I had the Tesseract NF1. This one uh, I showed off uh, yesterday on the midweek supplemental for the first time. Uh, this was sent to me by the company Tesseract, and uh, they have nice production here. Uh, whoops, NF1, and then it's got the specs on the back of this. Mm, what, what did I want to show you? Okay, so this is S35 VN um, Sheep's Foot. 3.1 inch blade this thing is buttery now i said in the midweek supplemental i was like i'm gonna guess that this was oem'd by kaiser because it's so smooth and it feels like a vanguard line kind of kaiser uh in a way uh, just a little more uh, substantial or stout and uh i sent the that portion to the company and they got back to me and said it's not a kaiser it's like it's not a kaiser uh, which I appreciated. I, I, I'm grateful they told me that. Um, I thought maybe it, it was only a compliment because uh, it, it's a really, really fine knife and a very nice knife to uh, fidget with and play with. And I know a lot of people love that sort of blade shape. Um, I also do. It's very, very useful. Uh, though you know me, I always want a little bit more of a point. Uh, but that's pretty nice, and that will do. This is a great, great knife. Um, long row of jimping here. It's sturdy as the day is long, and it goes through things like cardboard very nicely. I haven't done much more with it, but it is very good to play with. <laughs> if, if you can excuse that, it's a great fidgeter. So today it was my emotional support knife. All right, this is what I had on me. What did you have on you? Let me know. I want to talk about it. I want to find out, man. And uh, while you do, I, I got to show you uh, a new knife that I'm I'm lucky to have gotten my hands on uh, from Tactile Knife Company. Uh, Blade Ogre says, carrying the Hinderer XM18 recurve. Ooh, I like that one. That's the one in blue, right? Clever Girl, the UTX, U, uh, the Microtech UTX85, the SOG Trident. The case clasp knife, the Willemson uh, Blondie, Baron Sons Freedom Fighting Bowie, uh, the Emerson Sheepdog Bowie, the Dino Spike, and the Sleazy Ogre. Man alive, that's a good. That is a good haul. I gotta ask: Is the Trident a Bowie shaped Trident? Because they made that in the Tonto, I believe. Uh, because if so, you had a lot of clip point action on you. I appreciate that. Dion Page has the Black Talon 2 and the Spike Tonto at the ready today. 
Oh, both of those. Uh, definitely, definitely great self-defense options for various reasons, like stab, chop, slice, slash, and hack that button, junkies. <laughs> but those two that he was carrying, mm, great. Especially that, well, both of them. The slashing, of course, for the uh, the talon. But I was thinking of those spikes. They really are spikes, and you could drive them into a lot of places. Have a Knife Day says, I've been carrying the Spiderco Matriarch lately. Love it with the wave feature and full serration. Yes. And I got to say, um, so that knife takes advantage of the Emerson wave in this fashion. This is a bird. Uh, that's under Spiderco and under the same license from Emerson to put a wave on there. Uh, and, but I think on this knife, it's relatively hessly. Uh, I don't, I'm not crazy about how it looks. It's a little far forward because of the shape of that uh, opening hole. If it were a perfect circle, uh, it could be further back, would look better, and would also be a slightly uh, more smooth on the, on the draw um, because it would be closer to the pivot point. Um, but I also like on the matriarch, I just really like how the wave looks on the matriarch. Yes. Shallow. I know, but, uh, why not? If it's, if it's going to be that kind of knife, uh, where you're going to be using that to defend your life, why wouldn't you want it to wave out? Of course you would want it to wave out. All right. Steven. Stephen Clayton Jr. says, Rem Alliance Scourge Mini Tonto. Uh, TKL Combatant FLN3 uh, Guardian Night Stalker. Uh, I'm sorry, Guardian Night Stalker Combat Grade Piranha, the FMF, which is a really cool one. Uh, and I say that uh, out. I say that because I've read FMF for weeks and I was like, wait, which one is the FMF? And I looked it up last week and I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, I really like that one. The Accomplice, uh, the MR1, I have one right here, uh, the, and Reg Blades uh, Lightweight Viz Pro. Oh, that's the Colonel Blade. Uh, Midgard Messer Mini Axe, the Crudo Snag Bit. Uh, that Snag Bit's pretty cool. Crudo knives are interesting. Cool designs. I can't quite... Uh, tell if they're uh, what the quality of a crudo. I've never had one. I know they're somewhat expensive. And and then I look at the materials. I'm like, well, it must be the design and the name. So let me know how that crudo is. Uh, but it seems like kind of right up my alley. Uh, Nick E.D. Sear says carrying the new Elementum in S35VN, the gunslinger jack and a small Inkosi. That's a nice carry. Classy gents we have here. Jesse, evening and all. Well, evening to you, sir, and your crow. Kill Kenny. Good to have you here, Kill Kenny. Jack Carr books are awesome. You know, they are. I've only read the one. My dad's read them all. Um, and by the one, I mean the first one. Uh, but I really appreciated how he enumerated. Is that the right word? How he really uh, described in great detail um, all the gear he used. And especially, of course, I appreciated uh, the knife rundowns. Kraken Tactical, nice to have you here, sir. Hey, guys, how you all doing? Well, how you doing, sir? As usual, Kraken Tactical is making such cool uh, tactical knives. If you guys uh, don't follow him on Instagram, please be sure to do so. He's got some really super cool stuff. Uh, if your tastes are parallel to mine, you will definitely like it. Uh, but I'm sure you've probably already know him uh thomas farkas says carrying the microtech combat troodon tan serrated edge gen 3 got two days ago okay so uh i am not interested in gen 3 when it comes to the ludt but in the out the fronts like the combat troodon for instance uh yes i'm very interested in these new ones look at they look pretty awesome uh look at trees good to have you here look at trees uh carrying the white river knives fc 3.5 and the leatherman wave plus uh what is the white river fc 3.5 i mean is it a white river knives fixed blade kind of in the uh uh common profile uh, uh for a, a white river i'm just curious uh I like those knives. Uh, and what I mean by that is kind of like handle scale material and then a a bridge before the Ricasso that doesn't have any handle material, keeping it nice and thin if you want to wear it as a as a um, 
neck knife. Split and Slices says uh, pocket check. Cold Steel Holdout S35 VN 6-inch. Man after my own heart. Cold Steel Recon 1 S35 VN 4-inch spear. Rosecraft Appalachian Jack. Uh, that's a cool one. Uh, all of them are. Uh, in uh, SD leather, uh, Leatherwork Slip. Off-Grid All-Day Necker. A Forest SLR Hank. And SD Classic. And an Olight i3 EEOS. Very nice carry. A little more than usual for you. I got to say the Rosecraft Appalachian Jack. Okay. Oh, I, I wanted to just put a, a bookmark there because uh, I've been following. Um, if you follow Scab on Instagram, uh, Choir Boys Cutlery, he's been going some 28 days now, I think, using his Rosecraft uh, Lusa, not the Lusa Hatchie Jack, uh, the Beaver Creek Barlow uh, in his sort of industrial. A uh, work site, job uh, site, using it to cut sandblasting hose and all sorts of uh, nasty crap on the and and stuff that we would imagine would dull a blade pretty damn quickly uh, on a job site. And he's been doing that for 28 days and has yet to strop or sharpen the knife, and it's cutting amazingly. So the Rosecraft uh, Knife Company knows how to heat treat their D2. Uh, Jesse says Mini Champ Swiss Army Knife. Matriarch 2 and the ORJ Warn Clip. I love that ORJ. All right, let me show you this. Man, I'm dry tonight. Pat D's Nuts says, uh, carried my Manix 2 with OG scales. Very nice. Original goat scales are OG like your original scales, which you probably wouldn't mention. So I'm going to say original goat. All right, check this out. This is the new one from Tactile Knife Company. It's called the Chupacabra, and uh, you got to understand with a knife company that does everything in-house and buys a couple of things like stop pins from down the street there in Dallas, uh, that 240.49 uh, is, a, is a reasonable, or not reasonable, that's not the word I'm looking for. It doesn't have all the complex milling. It has a, a 7075 aluminum handle. Therefore, keeping the cost down a little bit, but it has got an exquisite blade. Uh, this sheep's foot blade is just really, really awesome. It's Magna Cut. Uh, I haven't used it enough to know how good the heat treat is, uh, though I know that their heat treat is 63 to 64, which is the sweet spot for Magna Cut, uh, I am told, <laughs> and I believe. Uh, but look at that sharpening choil. It reminds me a lot of sort of a, a Chris Reeve Knives uh, Nkosi, or a Chris Reeve Knives, yeah, like Nkosi blade, uh, but also a uh, uh, that the sharpening choil of pretty much all the Chris Reeves I can think of, where there's nothing in the way. Also, same thing with like the, that sharpening choil it's just all blade nothing to worry about in terms of uh backing up against anything uh but the real star of the show here besides that magna cut blade which is awesome and these very nice uh anodized titanium handle scales is yep the super lock the snex super lock and this thing's got awesome action and all the fidgetability of the uh, vision fg uh i uh let's see i have a vision fg around here oh did i put it back see i i leave stuff out and about and then i finally put it back and i need it that's why i need to that's why i need my clutter all right well anyway um i do have to say uh that the actuation tab on the uh tactile knife is uh a different shape and uh it took a minute to get used to but uh, what I mean by that is the other one hooks forward a little bit, hooks the finger in a different way. This you have to grab slightly differently uh, than the Vision FG, but this is not the Vision FG. It's a different knife, obviously, uh, but it's taking advantage of that same lock. So when this comes up, when you pull this back, let's see, uh, when it when you pull this back, it cants up a little bit, and you can see the notch in the top of that lock drops into the notch on the tang of the blade uh of course it's on bearings it's super duper smooth so smooth that i gotta time it right so that it doesn't bounce back out um 
So, I, whoops, uh, it's got this pommel that's perfectly designed uh, just in case you need it like this. You probably won't ever, uh, but it's perfectly designed for a reverse grip in my, in my opinion. Uh, but I've been carrying this. Uh, I've had it for about a week. And I've been carrying it solid that entire time. And it's, oh, this is definitely a great uh, workhorse of a knife. I would, I would imagine, uh, by imagine, I, I mean, like I've only had it for a week, but I, I think it would just keep going and going and going and could be someone's everyday, all the time knife uh, and be a really, really excellent choice. Uh, do I think this is worth 250 bucks? Uh, yes, I do. Given given the fact that it's made here in the States, all in-house, except for a couple of things that are also made in Dallas or also Texas, uh, close by um, to the to the maker. Yeah, uh, I say it is. And it's a, this is uh, for a tactile knife on their affordable side. But to me, it's still a high prestige knife. Uh, tactile knife company does not churn out tons and tons and tons of knives so there's not millions of them i well i can't say how many there are out there i would venture to say there are not millions of them out there yet anyway uh so there's there's a bit of prestige there's a bit of owner's uh, uh pride in having uh, this knife or a knife from that company um so yeah i i am digging this one i like that it is uh thumb stud straight up i like that it is uh, an in-house design. Well, I mean, I, that's neither here nor there. It this is an in-house design, but I just love how it feels in hand. I'm going to put it in my right hand so I can actually uh, manipulate it. Um, it feels great in hand. That does not uh, come into play. I don't feel it at all. I have a hammer grip on there, pretty hard hammer grip. Um, all the chamfered aluminum feels good. That 7075. Uh, it's not too chalky like a new microtech might be and uh yeah i'd say this thing is just right it does not have a lanyard hole if you care about that um great jimping uh just a great everyday carry knife and uh, again like i said uh, a workhorse and i would say a bit of a prestige knife so uh, i'm i'm happy to be able to show that to you i think it just went live today but well anyway today was the day i was allowed to talk about it I know it went live today, but uh, I guess maybe they sold out, uh, as uh, as this old sword was saying. Um, that's crazy. That's pretty quick. Um, so there it is. I'm going to do a close up video of this and do a comparison with the FG and other uh, the other tactile knife I have the um, the rock wall and show that thing off. All right. Uh, yes, the Trident is a Bowie. Oh, yeah, the older half serrated model from eBay that I sharpen right that I'm sharpening right now. That's awesome. OK, so before we get to the Nova 2 prototype, Craig Vincent says, as you might have guessed, Bob, I carried some cold steel. 8010 Black Talon Engage 3.5 The Carve. That's an interesting one. That's the Warren Cliff. Uh, the XL Holdout, the XL Voyager Tonto, the Tough Light, the Mannix 2 Lightweight, the S SRM Land 812, the Rough Rider Tobacco Doctor's Knife. What's the S? Oh, SRM. Okay, Sanrin SRM. Man, that is that is quite a load. I know Craig loves his cold steel, so uh, I'm happy to be doing a cold steel trade with him. Uh, okay, I want to talk about uh, something that's been hot on my mind since since uh, talking to Volwest of Station 9, and that is knuckle dusters and expandable batons. Because uh, without going into anything about it, you know, there's a, a, a stabbing case in the, in the news right now. And um, anytime there's a knifing or I read about a, a stabbing case, I, I look at how many knives I carry and, and the purpose. And I, and I start to wonder, would it be better if I used uh, different weapons leaned on the idea of different weapons? And so uh, my, some of my uh, nasty, but, but maybe less than lethal or less lethal than knives uh, weapons kind of uh, rose up. And a lot of it was talking to, to Volwest about these, these are the, um, Austro-Hungarian 
uh, knuckles from World War I that were issued uh, to troops fighting in the trenches. And it's a, they are nasty knuckles. They're different from these in a, in a very, very um, important way. Um, I'm going to do this in the main camera so you can see. So these here are uh, these hung Austro-Hungarian uh, knuckles from Station 9. Uh, as you can see, do not have a palm swell and have a curve here. And that is so that that was designed so that soldiers could do other things with their hands while they had these uh, on their gloves, basically. Uh, they could hold a knife. Uh, they could open a canteen. They could manipulate things. They could work on their gun. They could hold their gun, whatever it was. Uh, they could do things with the, uh, with the knuckles uh, that you couldn't do with something like this. These are McNeese. Um, I can't remember what the model is called, but it says be nice on the front, which I like. Uh, but with these, not so much. You can't be doing all that stuff. You've got this to worry about here. So uh, these, consequently, without having the, the palm swell area here, or that grip part, uh, get gripped differently when being used, more in a natural fist like this. My fist is totally closed, and I have a you know a strong... Fist. Now I've taken this out. You can see I have it wrapped in first in uh, a 550 cord and then some electrical tape. It's not pretty, but it saves the hand. Uh, knuckle dusters. I, I, I've never tried a pair uh, that have felt good. Uh, so I'm just trying to get, except for these, those feel good, but I'm not going to go out with that 1918 trench knife. Those are small enough. They fit me perfectly. Every other uh, pair of knuckles I have are rough on the inside and uh, just a little bit bigger than than my fist. Anyway, here I have a, a natural fist, and uh, on my Bob dummy outside, I've tested this, and uh, it's great for like uppercuts uh, under the chin and into the ribs or straight punches. Uh, I'm not going to turn my punch over with this, uh, but what this really excels at is this kind of raking strike where you're hitting with these. Uh, these things uh, across the face. You can use that last nubbin in a hammer fist. Uh, this is great in the hammer fist. It's not going to twist and hurt your knuckles. And um, you know, this is all this is all fighting for your life kind of stuff. Of course, you're not going to. Um, we're all adults. We're not going out and getting in fist fights. Uh, I presume uh, the only time that kind of thing comes out is in self defense. That's how it should be. Um, if we can't settle uh, our differences with words, we're you know. But we're in trouble and we need to learn how to. But if those kind of things fail, of course. Uh, so these kind of knuckles are interesting to me just as a historical thing, uh, how you can use them and how you can wear them. These knuckles, which are kind of more common, these are, these are what you see most often with a sort of something to rest against the palm. Well, I didn't know this until doing research uh, the past couple of days. You are not trying to punch with these things all the way up in a normal punch grip uh where you're where you have these these you want to have positioned right below these knuckles and you want this to brace into the palm like this so that if when you punch straight it's going straight down your arm uh, but really you're using this a lot of hooks and i noticed that with this too hooks but they're not hooks like where you're coming and you're making contact with the whole surface it's more like a hook coming around and using the, the point of the side of this or these two knuckles here. Uh, and that way it won't twist and hurt your own hand. I mean, you could really mess up your hands. If you go to town with knuckles and they're not on right, you don't have them, you don't kind of practice with them. I don't know. It's not intuitive to me um, holding them like this. Uh, so it's definitely something I'd have to get used to, uh, but hopefully I don't have to get used to it. Uh, if heaven forbid, uh, I ever need knuckles, which I can't imagine I'll ever need knuckle dusters in my life. But if I do, at least I got these and I can make a regular fist, uh, but interesting. And, um, maybe something to consider if you're interested in buying this type of paperweight, uh, do you want them for looks? Cause this one looks cooler in my opinion. Uh, or do you want them for use? Because to me, this these are more useful with our common pugilistic habits these days, I, I would say. But also, uh, 
I dug out this, which uh, I haven't used in a long time. And this is, well, I haven't used it ever, but I haven't carried it in a long time. And it's a small ASP brand expand, expandable baton. And ASP is like the name in expandable batons. Uh, so this one probably cost me a pretty penny. I don't remember. It's a bit of a pain in the ass uh, having it so short because it's hard to work up the momentum to actually launch this thing out of there um, if it's all the way in. That's why I recently added this lanyard. So when I open it, I can uh, be further down to get greater momentum to open it because it's pretty hard to open uh, otherwise. But having this lanyard uh, and, and having it more like this uh, has done the trick. These things are great. I, I I think that uh, except for the fact that it's very definitely a weapon like you're like this is a pretty good option for for self-defense because with a knife. Oh, my God, a knife could get you in so much trouble. And and you might never want to see the sort of things you would see in using a knife. Uh, not that you would want to see what you'd see with this baton, but I guarantee it would be less shocking and traumatic in a self-defense situation to clean someone's clock or poke them in the eye with this thing uh, than it would be to slash someone and cut them, of course, and see all that blood, etc. Uh, you know, I like those kind of knives, but I'm not out there uh, doing that kind of stuff, obviously. Uh, so this, I think, is a pretty good option. The only thing I think, though, is if you're going to choose a non-knife option like this, uh, it's still a weapon. It's still a, an expandable baton made of steel uh, for a kicking butt. Uh, is it not just best if you're trying to be, and this is a rhetorical question, but is it not just best if you're trying to be as low profile as possible to just have an anonymous piece of wood or maybe even a, a very deliberately broken piece of um, <clears throat> broom handle that you carry on you Uh to pretend like you just picked up if you ever needed it rather than something like this would that look better um or is that just a stupid thing to even consider because this is a pretty sure bet you know it's only 12 inches and you can flick the wrist and use that little knob bang and hit someone pretty damn hard uh, you don't need a lot of room and you don't need a lot of uh, swing or distance with a little tiny steel pipe like this um so I don't know, just thinking about other things other than uh, other forms of self-defense that are maybe less deadly and less, um, I don't know, more traditional, like a sap. I want to get a sap. It's so bad. You know, a little leather sap with a piece of lead in it. Whack. Uh, Will B says Grimsmo Norseman, the SBD, uh, the Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon, the Microtech Ramlock Stitch, a fine choice. Protect California Custom Knife Show Mordex, uh, the Emerson CQC 7BW, uh, Axial Shift, Hogtooth Nova 1, the Riot Exo, the Olight Baton 3, the Karis Bolt V2 will be. You walk down the street with that loadout, uh, and someone knows that they'll, they'll know. Uh, you know, this is a, a gentleman of distinction. Look at that. He's got a Nova 1, he's got a, uh, a Norseman. This guy knows what he's doing. Uh, Five Door says, carrying, uh, carry, breaking in a Strider PT. Very nice. Uh, carrying the Brian Tie Breaker. Playing with Brian Tie Breaker. Now, is that a, geez, I'm sorry, excuse me, Tie Breaker. I like the way all of his things relate to tie. Sticky Tie Bud was one. He, or he had something that was like tie, oh, tie stick. Um, uh, but, uh, what was I going to ask you about the PT? Oh, it's a regular Strider PT, right? Not a ProTech PT, because I saw that they're working on and releasing those. Stephen Clayton, Crudo is a great quality knife maker. They're extremely sturdy. All right. Well, they are extremely cool. And also, uh, I, I I remember reading something about Mr. Crudo. Don't remember his first name. Um, uh, but that he's a definitely he's like a trainer. He trains people in hand to hand uh, combat. He's definitely like a dude who knows and designs some crazy looking knives. 
for the for the guys who know uh no but for that that kind of self-defense and quick deployment edgy american good to have you here shane can't stay guys wanted to at least say hello love you guys have a great weekend hey have a great weekend sir uh before you leave let me show it i'm gonna show it now anyway check this out shane here is the nova 2 let's go under the let's go under the under the camera here uh under the knife cam so this is the Nova 2. It's a uh, worn sheep's reverse Tonto Kiridashi. This is like a Kiridashi, uh, a Viking Kiridashi, if you will. Uh, we've got ivory polished G10, red liners, an acid stone wash, a hollow grind on uh, 154 CM, and just totally wickedly sharp and nasty you got jimping up here in the just in the right spot and great in the reverse grip uh very very excited about this so uh here is the preliminary uh um, sheath color i was thinking a gray with that uh, ivory colored now that's a little bit off white it's a, more of a um uh, in this camera, it's looking just straight white, but it's a little bit more of an off-white uh, shade. And I was thinking with a with a gray, it would have a kind of a ghostly feel. I'm not sure if this light gray is the ticket, uh, but we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit. And uh, it is thinner than... Here, I'm going to pull out my prototype for the Nova 1. Where is it? It's over here. So the, the prototype for the Nova 1 is slightly different than the... Than the production versions of the Nova One, in that uh, the handle is much fatter on on this knife than the production version, and so here is more of a production uh, type handle, so you can see how much thinner it is. Uh, let's see, there it is, thinner but same length, same uh, general uh, package here. So if you're familiar with the Nova One, you'll you'll be familiar with the Nova Two in terms of uh, carry and stuff, uh, but a totally different design, obviously, uh, where we have the recurve here. We just have the straight uh, upward canted straight edge with the uh, less than 30 degree angle there. Or is that just at 30? Whatever it is, it's uh, a, an angle that I optimized for pokiness. And that tip is just daggum. It's wicked. So uh, as usual, uh, Matt Chase did an incredible job. A prototype there's my logo on that side and then the hogtooth logo on that side and there it is so again this is the prototype not too much i think i want to change though i've only had this in my hands for about two hours uh, so uh, i'll be living with this for a short while and then we'll we'll put this up uh, put this up for for pre-order. I am so excited. Uh, I, I really can't wait to carry this tomorrow and to um, well, I know how it's gonna carry because it's gonna carry pretty much the same as the Nova one, uh, though the sheath is slightly longer. well, it's slightly pointier due to the shape of the blade, but it's not really that much longer, if any at all. So I think it's gonna carry just the same. I just have to swap this over to the other side. Uh, that clip to the other side so i can get a good index carry uh but this this thing in reverse grip is is really really um pretty nasty now i, I wanted the the point of the blade to be right right down the center line kind of right where the uh the screws are and so that no matter where you are with it you know exactly where that point is going to be no matter how you turn your hand kind of like a dagger and yet you get that straight edge, but also that upward uh, angled edge. So there it is. That is the prototype of the Nova 2. Of course, we're going to do, uh, I'll do a bunch of videos on it and show it up and show it off. And whatever changes I end up doing, if any, I will uh, let everyone know. And they will be numbered, of course. And uh, yeah, there it is. Power uh, power play for real. Good to have you here. Hey, knife people, he says. Mm. Hello to you. I have knife daisies. The, the weekend after next is the James Black Bowie Heritage Festival in Washington, Arkansas. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, I know you did that last year. I'm pretty sure. 
I'm looking forward to seeing if new handmade Bowies come home with me. I wonder, will that happen? I don't know. I'm betting it will. That Chupa from Tactile, this is Northern Knives, that Chupa from Tactile has a great looking blade profile. Love the high flat grind too. Yeah, and you know what? It's not, it's not that thin either. I mean, it's a pretty substantial blade stock, uh, but it tapers down very nicely. It's like, you can tell from the small cutting edge, it's uh, pretty thin behind the edge. Fernando says, you shaved, you look 10 years younger. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what my daughters always say. Uh, I shave every April, uh, you know, grow it out in, in October, shave it off in April. And they're always like, you look 30, uh, so that they can enjoy um, all of the, you know, the benefits of flattering an adult. Uh, have a Knife Day says, I have a pair of classic brass paperweights and two sets of RJM Tactical Snuckles napkin holders. Those things are and nasty craig vincent see this is why i come here every week the range of topics regarding self-defense carry is vast well cool man i'm i'm glad i'm glad uh, i'm glad you like that i used to train uh leo uh, uh law enforcement officers in asp baton uh and that doesn't look like one of theirs uh yeah it is armament systems and procedures out of wisconsin uh, there aren't they aren't shiny black with clips to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, well, uh, this is maybe they maybe they sell these to uh, to the um, what do you call it the Rubes? It's it's their P series, P series. Um, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Asp or not, uh, the the cheap one I got at the martial arts store in Brooklyn uh, works better than this one. Uh, comes out deploys better. Uh, not just because it's bigger and it has more uh, momentum. Uh, this one's always just been a little sticky, so I, I kind of leave it kind of uh, kind of in a little. Yep, uh, it's got the knurling. I don't know if you can see that, but it's flat knurling. It's not raised. I'm not sure if that makes any difference. Edgy American, I'm back, Bob. Did you follow up? Uh, did you follow the Apple River stabbing trial? Uh, I'm sort of kind of uh, following it. Not really. Mm. I've I saw two reports from two different perspectives, and I decided to stop watching. I basically know what happened. I remember when it happened. Uh, interesting to see how long it took it to go to trial, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I got some mixed feelings about it. To be honest, I do. I do indeed. And it's funny right now. I I'm just keyed into, and maybe maybe we're all like this. Uh, but I'm keyed into every news story where where uh, it involves a 52 year old man, and the and the guy was 52 is 52 year old year, years old Nikolai whatever uh, his name is, um, can't remember the rest of his name. But um, uh, so that is neither here nor there. That doesn't mean anything. It's just something I'm like, wow, he's my age. This could happen to me. Of course, it could happen to anyone. Um, or I could find myself in this situation, especially considering my propensities my proclivities if you will uh so an interesting case uh you know i yeah interesting case craig vincent when i was a teen what do you think of it shane let me know craig vincent when i was a teen we all carried nunchucks that we made ourselves back in the good old days yeah i remember that i made some i made a pair of nunchucks um with wood that i found in the yard and this cheap like curtain chain nova 2 is spectacular great color combo thank you dave i appreciate that sir uh i like that i i like that you like it you know because uh to me dave uh, you've got awesome taste and uh, you also know how to use a knife so i appreciate that man stephen clayton nice looking knife well thank you stephen also uh, i appreciate that very sexy will be i like what you did with the language that's a freaking killer thank you dion i appreciate that dion yep i'm getting the nova too now guys i know it looks scary i mean the cool thing is i showed this to my wife craig vincent well when will that drop i'm not sure in a couple of weeks we'll open up the pre-order i just have to get my ducks in a row um i showed this to my wife a mo moolah required for the nova too yeah yep 
not too much more moolah, a uh, little bit more moolah. Um, but anyway, uh, I showed this to my wife and she was like, ooh, that's nasty. That just looks so mean. And I was like, yeah, all right, baby. And she's like, it looks like a big exacto knife. And I was like, yeah, it does. <laughs> and I like that. Uh, it does look like a big exacto knife. And I said, oh, it's a Kiridashi, darling. It's a Kiridashi meets a sax. And she said, I don't see any sax. All I see is Kiridashi. And no, she didn't say that. Uh, I like to call it that, but I'm seeing more and more Kiridashi uh, the more I go. Love Kiridashi, says Craig Vincent. I just love that kind of point. Now, I love a straight edge on a blade. I'm a big fan of a straight edge on a blade, but it's it can't have a rounded tip. Um, this was inspired by uh, the, the Hinderer Knives, a Warncliffe tip, the Yojimbo Warncliffe tip, uh, the um, the contact Warncliffe tip. Uh, various various Warncliffs uh, have have inspired that, and uh, they have to have a nice tip, uh, but a, a straight edge. And I'm using Warncliffe in the very original sense that they were used when people started talking about them in modern folders. Uh, now we know that it's a, like a, a continuous curve from the ricasso to the tip and all that, but I refuse to call that an, a, a, a reverse tanto. Uh, it was so unnecessary, a tragedy definitely brought on by those kids. I, I, I feel all of that. I feel all of that. Um, because someone died, one of those kids died, and uh, they found him guilty today, reckless endangerment. That sucks. Um, I mean, you know, and the reason I say that is because, uh, you know, it's, I, I feel uh, with my current uh, state of health and fitness and with, uh, with some fighting skills that I've amassed, that uh, I wouldn't in that situation have uh, gone for a knife, uh, certainly. Um, but what if you're overage and 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 that's calling myself overage? I don't know that guy. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, just a bad, bad situation. And you know, here's the here's the common element uh, besides stupidity and ego is alcohol. You know, they were all drunk. Well, I don't know about I, I don't know about the old older dude, um, but it wouldn't be surprising if everyone involved was just a little bit drunk. Uh, I'm pretty darn sure those kids were because they were acting it. Uh, Mark Herrera. Good to have you here, Mark. Hello, Bob, Jim and y'all. Bob, have you ever played a Rickenbacker? No, I have not. Uh, I love the sound of a Rickenbacker and I love the way they look, but I've never played one. Unfortunately, uh, off grid. I could. I mean, that's one of those bass guitars that you could be very. You could make. Uh, you could easily justify an irresponsible uh, decision to buy one of those off grid Viper V two. An awesome choice and manly comrade with me today. Very nice. That's a deep cut. A manly anything. Very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah. So just just to round that thing out, like. Uh, uh, Mix, mixed emotions all the way around. I, I am a father. I have kids. Uh, so the thought of someone, you know, of that happening to one of my kids is ghastly. Um, but I am also a father. And the thought of of something like that happening and me being attacked by or, you know, being ganged up on by a bunch of kids. Uh, that's also pretty scary. So terrible all the way around. Um, and I'm sorry that someone had to lose their life over this. Uh, stupidity and that someone else has to go to prison probably for a long time um it's interesting who ends up going to prison for a long time and and who gets to not go to prison for a long time and then it's amazing who gets turned into a hero posthumously uh even even if they've been scumbags their whole lives so i'm not saying there's any justice in in any of it but uh anyway a sad situation all all the way around and uh be careful when and where you carry your knives, you know, and don't just pull it out. You could have picked up a river rock, but you know, that's, that's Monday morning quarterbacking and probably uh, just as violent to, to attack someone with a river rock. Anyway, Pat D's nuts says, Hey Bob, do you still have me in your notebook for number 13 for the Nova two? No, I don't. 
I don't because last time someone else chose 13. Hmm. I know I have it somewhere, but uh, now I don't know where it is. So, uh, Pat, send me an email. If you send me an email tomorrow when I'm um, when I haven't had one of these and I'm sitting at a desk, I will be able to look at said email and, and write it down. And I will make sure that I know that email is the knife junkie doc, the knife junkie at gmail.com. Uh, Shane says, Bob, uh, I've been in his cardiac situation. I know exactly how his body reacted. He was petrified of how his body reacted. How did his, what do you mean? Uh, 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 please explain. I'm, I, I haven't heard. So I, I, I am not familiar with the details, I guess, at all. Uh, just saw a short timeline of what happened in the river. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, watch and cut channel. Hey, Alex, how you doing, man? Hey, Bob and Jim. It's good to have you here, Alex. Hello, everyone, too, he says. Well, hello to you, sir. Uh, what did you have? You had something cool posted today, just this very same day. What was it? Tell me what you posted today. Was it stridery or it was something um, something not as exotic for you, but it was done up like you do up your knives. And I can't remember what it was. Uh, if you don't know Alex, uh, I'm sure you do. But the Watch and Cut channel uh, is an awesome channel where he covers, yes, watches and knives. Uh, but man, Alex has a he used to be Alex's knife box a while ago. Uh, so some of you guys probably remember that era uh but he's got a very deep knife knife collection and no knife is stock with that man he has it all done up jesus bob you look younger than last time i saw you. yeah i shaved i shaved <laughs> yeah thank you why thank you sir and plus the light the way i have it angled you can't see the tremendous double bags under my eyes which are perpetually there even when i get good sleep which is rare uh, you'd think that would go away Shane says adrenaline after, oh, a, oh, that's right. He had a quadruple bypass. Uh, adrenaline after a quadruple bypass is the scariest thing you've ever experienced. You believe you're going to die in that moment. Oh, my God. Wow. My grandfather back in the 80s had a triple bypass. And that was a, that was a huge deal. I remember. I mean, man. Man. Uh, Jerry C says, oh, well, Jerry C, nice to have you here. Nice to have you here. <laughs> uh, I like that. that is, I can't tell who that is. Upside down guitar looks like Hendrix, but, uh, that's, he is facially looks like Zappa. I can't tell. Hi, Bob. Do you have a favorite budget knife? Mm, well, of course, budget is a relative term. Um, Okay, well, uh, I have a couple. I love the, I love cold steel. So uh, something is going to be cold steel. And if we're talking folders, it would be like a Voyager. In a in in any one of the blades, Voyager, sweet sweet, sweet sweet Voyager. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, I would uh, if you if you like uh, other like flipper knives and knives that are more fidgety. Uh, I'm thinking the um, Civivi. Uh, what's it called? The Civivi uh, Sen uh, Sentry. What is it? The Sentry. It is Jimmy. He says. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Uh, what is it? R tell me what it is, guys. Uh, do you have a favorite budget knife? It's the the Civi It's a button lock. It's a, a straight bladed Warren Cliffy reverse Tanto style with a big opening hole, and it's the um, uh, ah, Dad it. What is it called? Uh, well, I like that one quite a bit. Also, the um, CJRB. Um, I love it when Bob talks cold steel. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> Uh, let's see the CJRB, um, button lock that came out recently. Jeez, I can't remember a damn thing now. Uh, actually, Bob, he, uh, he should take a look at the new bag knives. Their budget. They're really cool. Wait, new. Oh, the new bag knives. Yes. That's a great suggestion. Uh, so, uh, the bag. Yeah. 
uh, the bag knives. Um, he's got some, uh, they've got some really cool slip joints too, but they have uh, like a budget bodega, which is a really cool knife. They have that budget uh, Astro Astrid something. It's a recurve Tonto. That's really wicked. Uh, if you like something ornate, if you like, like one too many notes, that's a good one. Uh, and then they have that uh, Quaken style knife. I forgot about those bag knives. That's a good one. Uh, but I would definitely go like if you want just one knife that's going to be rugged and 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 oh, the riffle is awesome. But that's not what I'm thinking of. It's the um, it's aluminum. It's got an integral FRN back strap, a button lock. Sentry something the the something sentry the sentry blast or some shit i don't know their names are their names are 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 obtuse but uh it'll it'll come to me or someone help me remember please please help me remember um but yeah so uh, but budget knives there are so many good ones like what i what i would say is kind of home home in or hone in on a brand, I guess for this show, hone in on a brand that you like, um, uh, whose designs you like, and then see if the company itself, uh, like Civivi, if you like Civivi designs, get any one of them. They're all good. I mean, they're all well made to the same standard. And they're, I've never had a Civivi with quality control uh, problems. Um, that's how I would go about it. Find the company that you really like, whose designs really speak to you, and then do a little research on the company here or, um, you know, on YouTube as a whole and see if they're well reviewed by the people who carry them daily and and then go from there. But yes, definitely, I would get a cold steel in your life because they're inexpensive and they just they go forever. They're incredibly robust. And then, as I was mentioning earlier, Rosecraft knives or Rosecraft craft blades incidentally um just in following scab every day of choir boys cutlery and watching him with his beaver creek barlow do some serious cutting of serious material a sentinel strike yes thank you derek thank you thank you thank you split and slices thank you sentinel strike that thing is awesome it better be after all of that get an emerson says watch and cut i agree i agree but budget so maybe uh, an Emerson, uh, uh, Kershaw Emerson would work. But where was I going? I, I think I just lost my train of thought. I'm sure it wasn't important. But uh, yep, uh, find the good comp find the design you like, see if the company's any good, and then go for it. This one happens to be particularly cool. I've been playing with this all day, too. So I guess this was an emotional support knife as well, but this is just a, this is just a, this is a Kaiser Penguin uh, by Jonathan Renaudant known as K Max Rom. And I love this design and I love Kaisers. Kaisers are great and they have a, a, a wide uh, price range. So if you can find something that you like in an inexpensive Kaiser, you know, it's going to be a great knife. Okay, uh, Craig Vincent says, Bob, the cold steel carve, which I love, is technically a sax, but it has a straight blade and a pokey tip like a kiridashi. Any thoughts on what the distinction is? All right, yes, I do. Uh, here is a classic uh, broke back sax design. So it looks, here, this is the cold steel chieftain sax. Let me put it under here, see if this is any better. Um, so it has a profile close to that of a bowie knife it has a straight ish edge but it always has a little bit uh, laughing my ass off thank you derek you saved a man's life tonight <laughs> uh from his wife because it at like 3 30 sentinel strike i'd wake up shut up get to bed uh so a little bit a little tiny bit of belly up towards the tip but very straight blade and then the broke back uh relates to this which we would call a clip on a bowie so it's kind of like a clip point blade but your carve which they call a sax is more technically like a lamb's foot if we're going to be a total nerd about it because it's like a sheep's foot with a with a hard angle at the top so i prefer lamb's foot to reverse tanto but the carve is closer to either one of those than it is a sax on a folding knife 
Okay, so this is a, uh, or, or a Warren clip. So this is a sax shape. Um, yeah, so that's all I got to say about it. I mean, they could call it a sax, just like I can call this, uh, this a sax, but this is way more, sorry, Jim, this is way more a kiridashi than a sax. Um, spiritually, it's a sax because that's what I was thinking of. Uh, but this is, you know, see the difference? Big difference. That's way more of a kiridashi. So without the visual, um, without the visual references, I'd be useless if I had to do that all with language. Um, I'm going to wipe this down because for some reason that sheath always leaves it looking like, uh, like a teenager rubbed this on their forehead. So I'm just going to put this over here. Sorry for the reference. That's gross. Derek, love a good old sax. I do too. And have you seen their scramma sax, the cold steel scramma sax? It's bigger because it's a scramma sax and it's got uh it's like 500 bucks and it's got a beautiful uh damascus blade and hilt double hilt and a big lobed like five lobed pommel it's whoa it's so cool have a knife day says a little bit of belly at the tip <laughs> my wife that's what she said very excellent uh yeah i i met your wife and she was she was nice uh, but I like I like getting the humorous side too, like hearing that. Doug Bowl, good to have you here, Doug. Hi, Bob. That is a beautiful knife. Thank you, Doug. Not sure which one, but everyone I've presented in my estimation is beautiful. Uh, so my artisan proponent is what? Okay. Your artisan proponent is not a Warren Cliff, and it's not a sheep's foot. It's more of a tactical lamb's foot. Or a reverse Tonto. And I, you know, I hate that term, but it's descriptive. It's it's descriptive enough to get the point across because I just know it's not a Warncliffe. Uh, because on a folder, a Warncliffe, <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, so that's what I'm sticking with. That's that's my line. That's what I'm sticking with. Um, I had a sobering thought the other day, which was um all the movies I want to rewatch, all the movies I love that maybe in my teens and 20s I watched a million times or whatever like that. Am I going to see those again? Just a question. Random thought. Um, Watch and Cut says, uh, Alex says, I don't like the way you're using the term broke back. Reminds me of the mountain. <laughs> I just can't quit you, Cold Steel. I just can't quit you. I mean, look at that handle. It fits the hand so well. My, my fingers wrap around it just right. <laughs> my broke back sacks. Derek, no, I haven't. I will definitely check it out though. Yes. Yes, please do. You will you will be happy you did. Set that down over there so that we don't have to talk about that anymore. Craig Vincent says, uh, LOL, I don't uh I I I don't what it I don't know what it's called as long as it's pokey. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's where some very awesome knives like the uh, Kaiser Towser K. That's where it loses me or the Kaiser uh, Sheep's Foot or no, no, Sheep do Sheepdog. That's where it loses me. No tip. No tip that you can stab with coming in from this angle. Maybe if you use it in an odd angle like you might use to uh, to cut into a box, maybe. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's got to have a pokey tip. Let me show you something else I got. Let me show you something else I got real quick. Uh, oh, the color's not going to come through. Uh, it's a bright yellow. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the color was coming through a little bit. It's a purple anodized uh, LUDT Gen 2. I went on a little LUDT uh, like search uh, because I saw the Gen 3s had come out and obviously that means they're phasing out the Gen 2s. I do not like the Gen 3s. Uh, maybe I could grow to like them, like an arranged marriage, uh, but so far didn't like them. And I've always loved the LUDT, always wanted one in my collection. So I went on a desperate search and uh, it wasn't so desperate and it wasn't so extensive. Uh, but I went to all my usual haunts and uh, no one had the Gen 2s and they're all sold out of the Gen 3s until I went to DLT trading and they had 
this purple anodized and and I'm looking at it on my screen and now I'm glancing at it in real life and back and forth and on the screen it looks blue and in my hand it really is like a gorgeous electric purple so I apologize for the if it's not as dazzling to use it as it seems to me but uh really awesome knife I'm I'm so thrilled that I I got it in the funny thing is is uh, I had it in my sights for a few weeks uh, because, um, you know, I don't just pop off and get $280 knives or whatever this cost uh, uh, frequently. So I kept my eye on it and kept putting it in a basket and then it would leave the basket and I would put it back in uh, until I had the money and no one else, I guess, was looking at it. They all wanted the Gen 3 and they didn't want the purple uh and i've and or probably didn't want the serrated which i definitely was looking for you know i'm into serrations right now especially on these microtechs and um so it was mine all mine and uh i friggin dig it i love it i had to cut that lanyard off immediately it has a, a noose lanyard or fob <clears throat> which <clears throat> i like in theory but I hate in practice. I've added those to my knives over the years, uh, especially in leather, when I'm like, this knife is never leaving my collection and I'm going to mark it. You know, this is like a wedding ring, basically. I'm putting this like leather fob on there and then I hate using it. I end up taking it off. Well, this I just cut off immediately. Yeah, real big. Oh, man. Let me see. Jim, I'm going to come to the main camera. Let's see if it looks purple over here. Maybe a little more purple here. Because I'm putting a more yellow light on it right there, but very, very <laughs> like stunning anodization. Boy, that was difficult. Anodization. So it reminds me a little bit of this, um, the uh, TR3, just in the fluting. It's an out the side automatic by a very well respected by me and everyone else American company that makes automatics. Uh, but I got to say, very different feel in the action. First of all, this this is like the spring is a lot tighter on the LUDT. So putting it back is more difficult and it fires a little bit harder. But this feels looser, uh, not looser like play. There's no play in it. It feels this this if if we were to make an analogy uh with modern folding knives that aren't automatics i would say this feels more like a sabenza this feels more like a drop shutty um bearings knife so this one feels a little bit uh smoother maybe not that this one in any way feels unsmooth or rough uh but I guess this feels freer on the pivot. I don't know if this is something that's a break-in thing. And, and I'm actually not assigning a quality to either. Uh, when I opened up the Microtech today, I was like, oh, my God, this action is awesome. And I was kept flipping, oh, my God, this is amazing. And then I go, how does it compare to a ProTech? Um, and, I, and, and how does it compare to this other Microtech auto? Um, and so in checking them out, I was like, oh, the Protec, it does have a very different quality to it. Same thing. It's a coil spring around a pivot and and it's, uh, you know, very robust build and it's aluminum and steel and all that. But different feels, different feels. It's interesting. Uh, just like when I had also the same materials when I had the um, uh, that a uh, bench made military issue only what knife i can't remember what it, that was called but but it had the same same thing totally different feel it slapped out um that is sweet bob i want the gen 3 ludt yeah that i i think that will grow on me i like that it's got a fuller what i don't like about the gen 3 is how high up the blade and the cutting edge sit on the handle this is already sitting up a little high uh but the gen 3 is like like that Northern Knives. I'm a big fan of the tapered chassis of the LUDT. Such a nice, such a nice quality engineering touch. Yeah, look at that. And you get the same thing in a uh, in an ultra or in a uh, whoops in a SOCOM. You get that tapered chassis on that too. 
Love that. And and the jimping on all of the knives, whether it's the Microtex or the Protex, uh, the jimping channels that you find in the aluminum are just awesome. Mark Herrera, Bob, do you have a video on the VC Edge interface yet? VC Edge interface. Mark, I'm I'm blanking. Are you talking about the sharpening system? What is that? Dion says it looks purple. Okay, maybe it's just my monitor. I'm glad it looks purple because it is as purple as the day is long. Matt, how you doing? We have Matt is faction. Good evening, everyone. Well, good evening to you, sir. Now, Matt has been um has been reaching out. Uh, Matt, your knife is called the Phoenix, right? The Kaiser. It is beautiful. Uh, Matt designed that beautifully upswept clip point blade um that kaiser is making that has uh man it's gotten a lot of uh huge kudos but um matt is trying to reach out to post malone to get him to notice i think post malone is a knife fan if i'm not mistaken and uh yeah that would be cool i uh i am not big on like new music at all i'm an old funny daddy but but my girls got me into uh post malone a couple of summers ago and i think he's top quality and he seems like an interesting dude too so uh uh let's hope that post malone uh takes notice of mattis faction's knife and uh if we can help him let's help him any of you guys know post do you know post i don't know post but if you know post get his people together with matt's people and let's make this happen people split and slices says i'm not a big fan of per 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 violet <laughs> those knives <laughs> a great way to completely ruin both red and blue oh my gosh byron that was that was relentless that was harsh what about the color of royalty what about the color of holiness and royalty um and left and right coming together i mean purple man purple especially when it's the only available LUDT Gen 2. Purple is the best. As a matter of fact, uh, this is going to be the only purple knife I've held on to because uh, I had one other purple knife. It was the um, it was the Wii 702, I think. Big, giant, worn, uh, big, giant sheep's foot. And uh, I just couldn't live with it. It had other colors on it, too. Uh, uh, Alex says, still my favorite review I ever did was the VC Edge review. Oh, super interesting knife. Yes, I know which one this is. No, I have not done that yet. I I, I have this open standing offer with Dirk, I think, to do a, a diplomatic exchange with some of my large fixed blades for his VC Edges uh, to check out. I just haven't done that. That was ages ago that he even... No. I do not. Sadly, I do not own that uh, because that was stolen from me, uh, from our our good frenemy, Joe, of uh, the Knife Whisperer. He stole that and uh, an Emerson Appalachian and absconded and, and obfuscated, and we all know uh, where that money went. Uh, but no, sadly, I do not have the Iron Dragon. For a while, I had some... Uh, some cold steel, uh, I mean, some Emerson people trying to find it by its serial number, which I thought was very cool. Uh, but, but damn it, no, I don't have that. Uh, that was a, that was um, casualty of trust, you know. Um, I trusted him, and I sent it to him to check out. Never got him back. Uh, Edgy American says, Bob, I can't wait for you to handle my manual TR4 at Blade Show. That Satu Dave reground for me. I can't wait either. That sounds awesome. I love the TR4. Um, big, beautiful knife. Um, I've only ever handled the automatic and only at Blade Show. So, yeah, I look forward to checking that out. VC Edge is very expensive and super sexy. Now I gotta say, I uh, VC Edge. We're talking about the same thing: carbon fiber uh, impregnate, not impregnated, but carbon fiber blade with a steel edge, essentially. Uh, very cool. I really appreciate the the work that and the design and everything. Definitely not my thing. Uh, Phoenix is greater than the XM18. Very nice. Sobx scooter. Good to have you here. 
wait, South Bronx scooter, right? Is that what that is? South Bronx scooter. Uh, Phoenix is greater than the XM18. That is one hell of a compliment, sir. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on the Phoenix. Satisfaction. Yes. Uh, thank you, he says. That's cool. That is cool. Purple is the color of royalty. Exactly. And it's the color of, of like holiness in the in the Christian church. Uh back in the in the in the bronze era, uh, you know, purple dyed cloth, you could trade that for a cow or several women. I mean, it was a purple was a big deal back then. Uh so <clears throat> Doug Bowl says, Bob, I have never had a steel ball bearing knife. Uh, is that mechanical as durable as non-bearing? Uh, you've never had a ball bearing. So I think mostly now they're ceramic, but that's maybe that's not true. Maybe that's not true. Uh, cause when they are ceramic, people like to tell you they're ceramic. So yeah, steel and ball bearing, uh, yeah, technically, yes, I will say technically. Yes, of course it has to be, but, um, you know, you might, you might get you might get sand in there or, or something. Um, but uh, like, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that it hasn't really borne itself out yet. And bearings have been in pivots now for a long time. Um, uh, my, uh, my very first uh, instance of it was in a 2013, um, SOCOM Elite, not this one. A 2013 SOCOM Elite, my road trip knife, was the first knife I ever had with bearings. And 2013 was pretty early for bearings in a knife. I was actually shy. I couldn't understand why it was so smooth. And then I later came to find out. Uh, nothing with that knife and no reports ever over the last 11 years um, have I ever seen anyone have trouble opening up their knife. Or, you know, you might get grit in there, but you take it apart. You So really, I think, no, I think it's, I think they're pretty, pretty stable. I'm still a washers guy. I love washers. Uh, but yeah, uh, watching cut says, oh my God, no, my other iron dragon got stolen from my car. That's too stolen. That sucks. Shed knives. Good evening. I hope all is well with you, my friends. Well, it's good to have you here, man. Shed knives. Uh, been kicking it. We have, uh, we have two here and, um, man, those, those shed knives go the distance. And I know he's changed some of his processes, making them even better. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing you at blade show, sir. Mattisfaction says trade purple for women. You say, <laughs> yep. Uh, in the, in the Iliad, I remember reading that, you know, uh, they'll talk about different sacrifices and different trades and different things. Like when you go to visit someone's house uh, in those old, old days, you didn't come stay. You stay for like three months and they give you keep gifts upon you and you get all of the pleasures of the house, all of the privileges of the house and all that. Um, yeah. Bronze Age was an interesting time. <laughs> I would be fine banishing purple. Back in the Bronze Age, <laughs> says Byron. <laughs> That's pretty good. I own a ten-year-old ball bearing knives. It's fine in any form. Yeah, right. In my in my uh, in my imagination, I'm like, well, if I can hold it up to the light and and perceive the spaces between the ball bearings, all sorts of crap can get in there. But realistically speaking, that that hasn't been the case for me uh, yet. Um yeah there was another comment that was up and i can't remember what it was i was going to address but i spaced it so uh yep oh we have a featured t-shirt of the week this is knife skills are life skills another knife design another t-shirt design from the great and powerful jim working his magic this time not at the switcher but at the t-shirt design post and every week he's got a new t-shirt design. You can go check out the knifejunkie.com slash shop and go through pages and pages of really cool knife art on t-shirts with uh, pithy maxims and funny quips. Uh, so do check those out. Featured t-shirt of the week, the knifejunkie.com slash shop. Uh, I'm just because I'm excited about it. I'm going to show off the Nova 2 again. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm really, I just want to look at it. Uh, he did something cool here. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I continue with this, 
Uh, I'll leave that there. But I got to show you this. This is something else he threw in the package for me to check out. I got to sadly have to send this back to him because uh, at the moment I can't afford it. Uh, otherwise, I would snap it up. But, you know, you can't just. I don't have P. Diddy money here, so uh, I'm just I'm just doing what I can. Uh, but check this out. He just did this. This is the little uh, ruffian, the little ruffian. Uh, I think I told Jim to call it the mini ruffian, but in talking with Matt, he decided to call it the little ruffian. Uh, so this is a small version of the knife I'm always showing here that I love so much. The ruffian ruffian, the big ruffian. Um, and he was just noodling around, made a small one, and check it out. It is substantially smaller, about two and a half inches smaller, uh, soup to nuts, and would make a great drop in pocket knife with this discreet carry clip uh, i haven't carried it yet uh, i just kind of got it uh, i'm going to make some videos of it i know what's going to happen i know what's going to happen unless he wants it back because it's the first one he's made and the only one he has i will end up offering him money for it he will end up offering to take said money and i will be the owner of this and will be able to tell you how great it is in the pocket uh but it, it it appears it will be awesome as a drop in the pocket clip to the to the um clip to the pocket seam sort of knife just like i was carrying today uh with the amtac northman um i i gotta say i like this format of pocket carry fixed blades i'm not 100 percent sold though because i gotta have a folder you know i gotta have a folder with me hinderer collector good to have you here man love it he says uh gotta have a folder on me and so the pocket carry ends up going in the left pocket then that's two knives showing one in each pocket i don't like that uh so i generally tend to like to stash my fixed blades somewhere in my waistband so um but this would go great there, too, because it's such a small little discreet knife. Doug Bowl says, Bob, it used to be a carbon steel blades were sharp, sharper than stainless. Is it the same with modern stainless? I don't think so. I think, Doug, a lot of it depends on um, the pot, like how much you polish it. Um, and what I mean by that is like um, I used to over strop all my knives, nervous stropping. I just keep dropping and it would end up like the knives would be very, very sharp, but they didn't bite. They didn't grab into the material because I was polishing uh, the micro serrations down so small um, to get that nice polished edge. It was still wickedly sharp, but if you wanted to start a cut into something fibrous, it was tricky. So I have a stone, a spider co stone, very nice little stone, perfect stone, perfect stone. Uh, and I just kind of sharpen my knives on that now. And it gives it a little bit of a toothier edge. Um, so I'm thinking it's less about the stainless being sharper. I mean, like I haven't really experienced a knife that in the right hand or a blade steel that in the right hands couldn't get really sharp. Uh, I think it's like what maintains it and that kind of thing. Uh, but I would have to say that uh, I think it might have to do with the edge and how toothy you make it, um, yeah, as well as the geometry and other stuff like that. But uh, lately, I'm 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 more interested in getting a toothier edge so that the cut starts the the instant I put the blade on, it's starting to cut. Dion Page says, "Top notch shirt, Jim. He has a lot of those, man. He's got a lot of cool shirts. <laughs> Jimmy shirts, hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, let me. I, I'm sorry, I just noticed." I have some Altoids in my shirt pocket. I do that sometimes. Drop them in there at work in case I have to go to a meeting or something. Don't want it to go through the wash. Okay. <laughs> Autumn wind. Very nice. Oh, I was thinking summer wind. Autumn wind. Awesome to have you here. Hello, all, he says. Hello, Autumn wind. What were you carrying today? Let us know. Northern Eyes, if you are one of those people who is OCD about blade centering without sacrificing smoothness, bearings is the only way to go. I think... You, you are absolutely right about that. One of my favorite innovations in knife design over the last 10 years or so. I noticed uh, 
the blade centering thing too like very early on when i when it was kind of a big deal to get something with bearings i was like they seem so stable i felt like i never got play um and uh and the the fact that you can tighten them down and still get smooth action um i loved so yeah that is a that's a good point uh gotta run love you guys see you all soon dinner with the family have an awesome dinner with the family uh alex take care man always great to have you here split and slices did you ever mention when the pre-orders or drops of the nova 2 will take place ish uh no a couple of weeks i'll be or you know kind of within a week or so i'll, I'll mention it i want to get i want to get rolling kind of want to stick to the same time frame that i did last year I think i announced it in april last year so i want to kind of keep to that um so uh must have hit the head if when you did you allow yourself to do such a thing during thursday night knives i bring a big jar in here because i'm like i'm not going to miss a moment of this uh craig vincent says so i'll i'll let everyone know as soon as the drop believe me i'll i'll be blabbing all about the nova too so i'll let you know uh, Craig Vincent says, I've been trying not to over sharpen my micro serrations. <laughs> That's good, Craig, because uh, we don't want to do that. Our micro serrations must remain as is. Uh, Matisfaction says, so I've been following a while and heard of Jim, but I don't know I've ever met Jim. Who is Jim uh, that does the comments in shirts? And how can I learn more about Jim here? You know what you can do, Matisfaction? You can go back to some of the very early episodes of the Knife Junkie podcast because Jim used to come on the show. He was on and we would talk. And uh, and later he wanted to focus more on directing because uh, this is what he really loves, the producing and directing side of it. And uh, and I said, OK, well, I think I might be able to blab for an hour straight. So uh, let's see how it works. And he's really happy back there. Uh, but look at some of the early shows. He's awesome. He's a he's an old friend of mine. Actually, we work at the same workplace and kind of do some of the same stuff like we do in our private lives at work. So, uh, um, yeah, Jim's Jim is truly the man. And man, without him, um, uh, Knife Junkie podcast is back in a cave. Uh, Jerry C says, I think with everything on the market today, it's a non-issue, which can be sharper. It's a great time to be a knife collector. That is that is 100 percent the truth. Hey, Jim uh Matisfaction was asking and uh you know alex was here he remembers you from the old days so one of these days let's have you back on sir <laughs> as a guest on your own show northern knife says if you look up knife steels by edge retention generally 70 percent of the list is stainless recently carbon has its place but it's slowly becoming old tech carbon's place is in fixed blades i think in in you know impact toughness um for instance this knife the partisan man this is 1095 and you can see videos of them taking this and bending it doing it doing the um sort of the the journeyman test with this where they put it in a vice and bend it and it springs back to true um most of the time and uh, you know 1095 you can sharpen it easily yeah, I like it. I like it. Uh, so, yeah, it is old tech, but I still think it's got its place. Well, like you said, I think it definitely still has its place. Were you thinking its place is outdoor knives and toughness? Because that's what I'm thinking. Um, though I do have a couple of very small, close to the body, fixed blade defensive knives from Tops that are 1095. And only the edges have ever rusted if i have them uh, on me in high humidity and you just drop that off uh, polish that off no problem uh let's see here now uh, uh i wanted to show you something else where to get off to uh oh here it is so uh i showed the bowie my my brother got me let me show you the k-bar he got me uh now this was for another uh either holiday or birthday that i did not see him for and so he had these saved up and when i saw him last week he gave these to me uh but check this out so he loves world war ii I mean, he doesn't love world war ii but he's uh interested in the history and uh, jerry c says and of course oj will not be using knives anymore yeah yeah sad to see you go man uh 
so uh this was a aftermarket sheath a very nice leather aftermarket sheath uh but check this out this is a camillus and my brother is thinking it's vietnam era that's what the guy who sold it to him thought uh, of course the blade the parkerization has been stripped off you can see camillus there kind of some of that ghosting streaking up from the stamping looks like it was done in a hurry you know not not too much care taken in this but solid is all hell perfectly round handle which is uh not optimal my other uh, k bar has a more oval handle which resists turning in the hand uh, under impact something that we all know intuitively but really came uh, became illustrated uh, through forged and fire tests you know when they're slamming things like this into a pig and it turns in their hand they always mention cylindrical handles uh, Northern Knives, I still offer a carbon steel in my hunting knives, and in fact, my personal is high carbon. Not saying it's obsolete, just not necessary for good performance like it used to be. Yeah, yeah. And and really, like, I, I don't know. I would imagine this, the difference between steels really is quite minuscule when it comes down to it uh, for most people, for how most people use it. Like, me I, I mean i know what responds well to like a strop or a or but or a uh, sharpening system but excuse me on the whole i'm not i'm not cutting and saying oh this cuts like 440c I just um uh so another cool thing about this sharpened swedge so definitely older with a sharpened swedge more combat oriented period of the mark ii or k bar and then this one also has the the quillians one turned up one turned down i'm not sure if that was factory but i love it i love it i never appreciated never liked the regular k-bar both quillians back that always looked weird to me i always thought both quillians should either be pushed forward or it should be in this sort of s configuration doug bowl says bob did the k-bars uh, usually come with a sharpened clip point uh, up until a certain point um so i have a reproduction that was released in 1991 of the 1942 version of the k-bar and it has a very sharp swedge if you buy the case version of the k-bar it's got a sharpened swedge uh, these older models like this one here uh, that one from world war ii and uh, others that i've hefted from earlier times have that sharpened swedge but if you buy a k-bar now uh, you know it doesn't have that at all it's a it's a pretty thick swedge mark herrera i still like ats 34 ats 34 japanese 154 cm right um i don't have anything with ats 34 but i do remember when that was like oh that was the hot hot steel uh on like bench maids and stuff back in the day uh or back in my day <laughs> i should say we all have a the day uh, Craig Vincent says, I have about a dozen Camillus knives, Bob. I kind of like them. I think they used to be made here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, they still are, I'm pretty sure, in New York, in New York State. Uh, Camillus. Or wait, was Camillus? The, no, Ontario uh, Knife Company closed down, but but restructured and is reopening and all that. But yeah, Camillus is still around up in New York. New York. Uh, let me talk uh, bef before we dip out of here. I want to talk real quick about the new Rosecraft knife. Now, I have not gotten it yet, but I, I think this might be, you know, I, I sort of missed the last couple of releases from Rosecraft because I sort of uh, got jolted out of my slip joint phase with my Microtech phase. But uh, Rosecraft Blades has a couple of new ones out, and this this one is exciting. This is the Rosecraft uh, uh what the hell are they calling this what is this thing it's the two jacked uh the two bladed jack it's the what is it what is it the briar patch jack that's right look at that thing I, I i like it a lot i think it's cool as hell it's sort of like a well it's a cigar pattern so that means equal ended jack cigar pattern uh patterned equal end jack um and sort of a muskrat with the with the um with the equal uh, large size blades on either side 
but this one has a beautiful, uh, generous clip point blade there. And then it has a lamb's foot. You see that? That's a lamb's foot and not a sheep's foot. What's the difference, you say, Bob? Well, I think a lamb's foot, uh, if you follow the spine to where it takes a turn down towards the tip, if that turn is a hard angle and the blade from the ricasso to that hard angle is tapered, and becomes smaller, and then does that drop down? Are you following me? <laughs> then that's a sheep's foot. I mean, a lamb's foot. Oh, manaj. Uh, so the spine and the edge are both straight, but not parallel. Uh, it starts out wider at the ricasso, tapers down to the part where it angles down to the edge, and that's a lamb's foot um, in, my, in my observation. So I think this is very cool uh, because we love, we meaning me, the royal, we love the clip points that Rosecraft has been putting out. Every one of them uh, inspired and oftentimes inspired by uh, historical Sheffield uh, folders. But this one has a great clip point on it and a great uh, straight edged uh, working blade, in this case, a lamb's foot. So I'm really psyched about that. Gorgeous. Uh, gray bone there and that rosebud shield all nice and smooth at least at least the uh specimens by all our trusted slip joint voices so excited about this one what about you guys uh interested in a double bladed uh rosecraft i mean because up until now all rosecrafts have been single bladed and i know people love their single bladed slip joints uh they're not only easier to carry but you get the full use, you get the full benefit of the ergonomics and the and the profile shape of the handle. Whereas when you have a double bladed knife, you have that spine of the other blade obscuring the ergonomics. So I don't know. I think it's cool. Good looking slip joint, says Dion Page. Well, I would agree with you, Dion, and great minds do think alike. Uh, God forbid I ever have a slip joint phase. Oh man so strident uh i don't still use an outhouse <laughs> well how do you get to work do you do you ride your your horse and buggy so i don't use a slip joint. okay so so by that logic you should only ever use like a a cnc hawk deadlock or or whatever the most advanced knife is by that by that logic and Hopefully, you're driving to work in a hydrogen-powered car because that is probably the newest and biggest deal. Northern Knife says, ATS used to be the hot poo for custom makers. It takes a hell of a high polish. Unlike a lot of modern stainless, it, give, it gives good eyeball. Yeah, no shit. I like that. Well, that's funny because um, analogous is 154, and that's still a favorite uh, among among knife makers i love 154 uh it's a great steal but i guess i'm not hardcore uh because i like 154 uh split and slices says the briar patch is cool for the for for the two large blades uh but the noka chucky is a classic and classy with its swedge spear oh right 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 uh and brown micarta not purple Come on look at this look and with this with the purple uh point taken by the way uh but with the purple it's cognitive dissonance people see the purple and they're like i don't know should i be menaced or should i take this guy seriously or not i mean he's got a purple knife does he think he's prince and while they're thinking all these things i'm winning winning <laughs> so purple don't forget the power of purple yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you for checking this out. I'm going to sheathe this sucker up before it stabs me in the forearm. But did I mention that it's really nicely hollow ground? Let me show you that before I put her away. Really nicely hollow ground there comes to a nice thin edge. As a matter of fact, uh, Matt was saying, Oh, I might have to, I might have to do it on a, on a bigger contact wheel. So it's less, um, con uh, concave. And I said, you will do nothing of the sort, sir. And so it will be nice and slicey and thin. And that tip is wicked and nasty. So I bestn't uh, ever like unsheathe it over concrete. 
uh, lest I drop it on the tip. I guess I'll, I'll have to get two or three of these so that if I drop it on the tip, I can throw it away and, and just pull a new one out of the drawer. Because, uh, you know, that's how we do it around here because we're big, big hot stuff. So make sure you know that. All right. And then I will uh, show you this real quick again, just uh, in case you're interested. I, I do believe he's going to have 25 of these. Uh, Matt will have 25 of these at Blade Show at his table, he said. So he better get making. He better get making, boy. Uh, these things are so cool. I want this one. I hope he... I hope he offers it to me for a reasonable price because I'll take it. Uh, Craig says, sheep's foot, lamb's foot. I want, I want to design a new type of tough, stubborn blade and call it a donkey foot. That's a good idea, a.k.a. Uh, Jack asked, you know where I'm going with this. I like that, man. That's a good idea, the donkey's foot. Purple pain. Thank you. Thank you. That had to be said. That had to be said. I love it that you guys are so punny. Uh, come on, be secure in your masculinity, y'all. Nothing wrong with purple. Well, there is a taste thing. Like, I used to hate pink uh, because it was an art school thing. I was like, I don't like any color mixed with white. I don't like mint green. I don't like pink. I don't like light blue. You know, you just, so I had this whole philosophy about the color pink. Uh, and then having girls change that. I, I, I love pink now. I just won't wear it on my skin because it makes, like yellow, it makes me look as sallow and dead as possible. Uh, but but yes, uh, one should never be afraid of color. Color is color. Color is color. And if it's the only Gen 2 LUDT you can get your hands on, you're going to go for it. And, and, and I got to say, in person... I swear, it's so masculine and so stunning. Uh, Edgy American says, uh, a Chinese-made Texas Bowie slip joint with a shithead, with a shit heat treat is my worst nightmare. Chinese-made Texas Bowie slip joint with a, <laughs> the shithead, uh, oh, I keep saying shithead, shit heat treat is my worst nightmare. I love that. All of those things put together. Uh, is it a front flip or two? <laughs> Craig Vincent says, I often wear purple sleepwear. Aha. Craig, I like it. You're I'm wearing a purple shirt right now. Look at this. Aren't we all so secure? I love it. All right, guys. I think that about does it for this very, very secure and masculine man. Be sure to join us on, Vol on uh, Sunday for Vol West of Station 9. Just a quick reminder, Station 9 uh, does all the cool resistance weapons Weapons from the trenches of World War One, weapons from the resistance and the and the SOE from World War Two, and uh, very interesting guy. Uh, he, we had a great time talking. Uh, interesting uh, to find out his there and his design philosophy, and then the stuff they have upcoming sounds awesome. So check it out. I wear no sleepwear, says Mark Herrera, because I never sleep. Uh, Gus Beck says, wow, Bob, looking fresh today. Uh, thank you, Gus. I appreciate that. Today, I carried the Hinderer Fire Attack Recurve. I like that knife. Uh, that knife took some time to grow on me, I got to say. The SOG Power Access Multi-Tool and the all-black Kershaw Blur with serrations. Today, I got a Morris Friction Folder. Nice. Congratulations. And on the Kershaw, that's funny. Uh, uh, Therapeutic Edge th showed his blur today. And someone else showed a blur. And I was like, why have I never gotten a blur? Later, junkies. Jim, Bob, have a good week. Have an awesome week, Mike. Great to have you here. Uh, Blade Ogre says, thanks again for this awesome show, Bob and Jim. Thank you, Chris, for the kind words. Night all, and have a great weekend. You too, Blade Ogre. Matisfaction. Good night, everyone. Good night to you, sir. Uh, can't wait to be talking to you very soon. Split and Slices says, anybody know what color one's leg turns when they're hit by a 60-mile-an-hour fastball? I'm pretty sure it's purple. Uh, Southern Bronx, uh, uh, South Bronx Scooter says, peace and love. Peace and love to you, sir. Have a good one and stay safe. Dion Page, good night, King Junkie, Jim, and all you junkies. Good night to you, Dion. Gus says, the blur is essentially the commander blade shape. Thank you, Bob. It is. It is. And in a great package. I just got I don't know. I just got to get one. Uh, Craig Vincent says, I have a second mayhem on the way. I don't care what color it is. 
Hopefully it's purple. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to join us on Sunday, and uh, we'll see you then. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, this is the Nova 2, and don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>